man certainly could get used to this. Mm. Well, this woman's already used to it, sweetie. What's <laughs> that mean? I get breakfast in bed every morning, hmm? Well, every morning that you don't. Think about giving it to me first. Then that should last our golden anniversary. Mm. Croissants and kisses. Mm. 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 It's a great way to start the day, isn't it? <laughs> We better get it and start ours. Come to think of it. What? Time to go. What's the rush? Darling, we've only told half the world that we're getting married. We still have another half the world to tell yet. <sighs> Do you think there was a reason that Robert wasn't overly enthused about our news the other day? Hmm. Just preoccupied, that's all. With what? Uh -huh. I don't know. He says he's gonna fill me in, he hasn't done it yet. It really can't be that serious. Or he would have asked for my expert assistance. Well, why don't you use your expert assistance to pin him down on when we're having our engagement party next week? Maybe he'll be in a better mood to help us celebrate, you know what I mean? I really don't need any help to celebrate. Ooh. Not at all. Yeah, that's why you say that, honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wins all no, it's, the time. no, it's probably Robert. Probably Robert. Always win. Always win. Hey, old buddy, how'd you like to go to a... Oh, I... <laughs> Terribly sorry, I thought you were somebody else. May I ask who's calling? Oh, hold on a moment. It's uh, Jill for you. Jill, my at home with producer, what you call her? Obviously, she knows you're at home with me. Hmm? Maybe. Uh, yes, Jill, it's. Whoa, what? Wait, uh, uh... So I can't understand a thing you're saying. Just... Well, get, get out of there right now. Come over. To... Yeah, Sean will help you get. I said, get out of there right now and leave. You gotta get up. Come on. Honey, you just offered my services to a complete stranger. She's my producer. She's not a stranger. What are you talking? Well, that's even worse. Honey, somebody is trying to kill her. Get up. Uh, don't put that pot down. One cup of coffee coming right up. Thank and you. what else can I get for you? Nothing, thanks. This should start the engine just fine. You're really into this new job, huh? Mm. I'll tell you, old Max sure runs a smooth shop. Don't you mean ship, sailor? Uh -uh. I'm a Marine, not a sailor. You will be when Mac gets through with you. He's quite a character <laughs> and a little difficult to get along with. So far, so good. He is trusting me with most of the work on the Aphrodite. That's some tug, talk of the waterfront. Matter of fact, I'm meeting its owner here today. Lord Ashton uh, is coming here himself. <laughs> I'm so excited. You know, the scuttlebutt is he's British nobility. Well, I don't know about that. He does have a British accent, but... And about his... Uh, I, I guess you'd say lady, isn't that what a lord is married mm -hmm. to a lady? Yeah. Well, I haven't met her yet. Matter of fact, I've only spent a few minutes with the Lord himself when he came into the shop. Well, when you know more, you can fill me in. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't intend on learning too much more. You see, it was made very clear to me that the Lord requires his privacy. I see. That means I can't ask any more questions. Well, I can't speak for you, but I don't intend to. I've got the message loud and clear. Oh, speaking of ladies, have you heard from Felicia? You gonna write her? Yeah, of course. I haven't yet, but I, I will. No, send her my love, hmm? Okay, I sure will. You know, I'm glad things are working out for you. After what you've been through, you deserve it. Which is more than I can say for your cousin, Lucy Coe. What she deserves, I can't say in public. Oh, thank you, that's, that's fine. Could you please take this? I'm sorry, I just don't have much of an appetite this morning. Um, I guess I'm just too upset, Amanda. <laughs> well, no wonder. With the prospect of meeting with your husband and his attorney, it must be unnerving, to say the least. Well, my attorney set this meeting up. Yes, well, unfortunately, these things, no matter how unpleasant they are, are necessary. Yeah, well, I just feel so dreadful about all of this. And right now, I am feeling inadequate. <laughs> well, that's the one thing that you're not. And don't let them make you feel that way. Well, I guess it's easy to see why. I am supposed to 
meet with them today about money, which is the furthest thing from my mind right now. I'm supposed to come up with some sort of financial statement, and I have to give them a proposed budget for my temporary living arrangements. Hmm. Who's representing you, Tony? Um, some woman named Karen Kennedy. Uh, do you know her? Oh, yes, I know her. And I certainly wouldn't let her intimidate me. <sighs> but then, of course, I'm not going to give you an advice. No, Amanda, please. I would appreciate any advice you could give me. Well, I have been in this sort of position before, and, uh, I find that it's better to be pleasant, uh, uh, dignified, and by all means, fair. But of course, at the same time, you and your attorney should insist on everything that you think you're entitled to. Yeah, it's funny. You sound exactly like my attorney, Carl Burns. Burns? Oh, but that's an excellent selection. I understand he's very attractive, <laughs> both in and out of court. Well, yes, I, I guess it is, but right now my mind is just on this legal matter that I have. <laughs> well, of course, I'm no lawyer, but anything I can do to help you, I'd be more than happy to. I wish I could tell you how much that means to me. I, I am just so grateful that you've supported me and that you've been on my side. It makes me... Amanda, I just had a, a wonderful idea. I, I hope that perhaps you can help me in, in a way. Well, just name it. Well, it just popped into my head. I think that you could maybe do more for me than any attorney could right now. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. No, no, it's true. Amanda, you sit on the hospital board. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, oh, around how much Tony makes for a salary. And so perhaps you could just give me some rough, rough idea about how much money I should ask for from him. Even though he's caused me all this pain and anguish, I know that money could never compensate me for all of that. Well, I do have a few ideas on that. For instance, since you were forced out of the living space that sustained you, I think that you deserve a, a more comfortable suite at the Fort Charles Hotel. One with a view of the water. Do you really think so? Oh, and then, of course, as a matter of continuing the lifestyle to which you become accustomed. Uh, you're a doctor's wife, and you have a certain standing in the community, and you have certain obligations, and there are certain functions you must attend. Come in, Dr. Jones. I believe we'll be more comfortable working at the table. Please. I don't have to tell you I'm not too comfortable about having this meeting. But I'm going to come out strong, because I think Lucy is going to fight this divorce with every trick in the law books. Okay. Well, I might have read one or two that she hasn't gotten around to yet. Well, I want you to use all the ammunition you've got. I don't want to be vindictive, but I want to make sure that she gets what she deserves. Well, it's my job to make sure that isn't too much. Good. To breakfast, darling. I'm not hungry. I can't stand seeing you suffering like this. These migraines are coming more frequently, aren't they? Please, Lawrence, don't fuss. I'll be fine. Yes, well, I want someone to take a look at you. We know that won't do any good. Well, something has to do some good. You can't go through your life suffering like this. Look, at the risk of upsetting you, I've made a couple of Lawrence, calls. Lawrence, no more doctors. This is not just another doctor. While we're here in Port Charles, I want you to see a neurologist. His name is Tony Jones. He's a general hospital where I understand the diagnostic facilities are second to none. I don't want to go to the hospital. This is just for an examination, for a couple of tests. <sighs> Look, I can't force you, but I have made an appointment. I really wish you would have asked me first. If I had asked you first, you would have refused. So will you please do this for me? Oh, when you ask me that way, how can I refuse? You can't. <laughs> Look, I, I hate to have to coerce you, but whatever it's going to take Lawrence, to get you some relief. Lawrence, please, I said I would go. What time do you want me there? Well, I have to meet this engineer fellow on the waterfront, a place called Kelly's, in the morning. Will you meet me at General Hospital at 1 o'clock? Of course. And thank you. No, it's I who thanks you. <laughs> I thought you'd make a lot more fuss than that. And what would I do without you? Oh, you'd survive. 
But me, without you, I would be lost. All right, Jill, I want to take it from the top one more time. Now, you saw the whole transaction, right? The four guys gave him the money. Uh -huh. He gave them the dope. Four million dollars worth? That's when I heard the man say the drugs were worth on the street. And then you were subpoenaed to testify, right? Well, that's why I got the phone call. I'm terrified, Mr. Donnelly. Oh, the Jill, Jill. They said that if I did, they were going to kill me. But look at this summons. It says that if I don't appear, they're going to put me in jail for contempt of court. Yes, I know. What'll I do? Sean, what is she going to do? Jill, the first thing you can do is now just relax, keep calm, and, mm -hmm. and don't cry, all right? I'm sorry. Come on. Oh, God, what about your show? I what? forgot to get in touch with that lord and lady. Oh, you didn't do that? Oh, heavens to bits, you didn't do that? Sweetheart, what is she talking you about? You know, the yacht, the Aph Aphrodite, you know, the big yacht that pulled in that everybody's going crazy about? <clears throat> I... Well, We'll just have to postpone that for the time being. We can't postpone it for indefinitely, though. Sean, I have got to have an interview with this Lord and Lady Tiffany, Ashley. Honey, I'm telling you. I've got, honey. Okay, okay. Um, but it, 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 we've got to do something with her. Could you help her? Yeah, I mean, I, this is like the the, the 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 interview of a lifetime. I've got to have that. It, it could do things for my station. Nobody's ever... Okay, so, um, so okay, what are we going to do about Jill right now? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is call a friend of mine in the DA's office. I want to find out who's prosecuting this case. I can't believe you're doing this for me. Well, let me tell you, if anything can be done, Sean will be the one to do it. Uh, hi, I'm Millie. <laughs> Sean Donnelly. How you been? Long time no see. You have lots of friends. I just didn't know Millie was one of them. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got something right. Yeah, if it'll help expedite matters, the case number is 768598. Yeah, People versus Decker. Mm-hmm. I want to know who's prosecuting the case. Yeah, I see. No, no, no. No. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mel. Bye-bye. Well, what did Mel say? Unfortunately, the man who's prosecuting this case, I wouldn't necessarily call a friend. Oh, wait, you know, you're not talking about who I think you're... You've got to be kidding. Yeah, exactly. Our champion of justice, Scotty Baldwin. Oh, please. Things couldn't be worse if we... Try. I can't believe this. What's going to happen to me? Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Don't worry. I mean, I, things aren't really that bad. Yeah, they could get worse. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Jill, just please. Pitbull Decker. Nice guy. Well, sorry I'm late. The traffic was terrible. You know, I demand punctuality. Yeah. You? Listen, is it true what I heard about you downstairs in the coffee room? Well, that depends what you heard. Well, Dick Zalnick has called out of town on a family emergency. Mm-hmm. Great aunt or something like that. And you volunteered to take the Decker case? Well, I'm reading everything there is to know about it right now. I wonder if there's something wrong with you. You want that thing? I got it, didn't I? And you're happy about it? I can't wait to get my hands on this dog, Decker. Just, just read this. Like I told the district attorney's office there, this guy belongs behind bars. I'm the one that's going to put him there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and the six guys before you. <laughs> Take my advice. You want to last around here? Remember, the first rule of survival is never volunteer. <laughs> well, this happens to be a little different. Oh, really? How come? Read it. Oh, it gets worse. The police got there too late to see the actual transaction. It's eyewitness, Jill Sechrist. TV producers obviously got an eye for detail, which makes it a snap to prove that Pitbull took one too many bites and it wasn't out of crime. I'm going to lock this guy up and I'm going to throw away the key. <laughs> 